Uh, today, you know, we've got a good variety of panelists joining us. So we have Istvan Molnar from DPC Consulting in Hungary. We've got Avik Ganguly from Finnerfin in India, and then Victor Romero from Fintech Yando in Mexico City will also be joining the, the panel. So we want to cover a number of topics on the panel today. First off, you know, just starting to look at, in general, across the financial services sector, you know, where is Finneract and Finneract CN best positioned to scale? And then we'll dive in a little bit more around, you know, some of the best opportunities and pain points and challenges and scaling each generation of the Finneract platforms. We'll take a closer look at some of the direct use cases where these individuals have helped to achieve maximum scalability on the platforms. And then we wanna take the discussion in the direction of, you know, what are some actionable items to bring forward to the community as a roadmap. You know, what are some of those shared resources and pieces that we could work on together? As we know that a lot of partners and companies out there building solutions on Finneract have achieved great scale, but we need to bring a lot of this back to the community because it makes no sense for each partner to individually be doing the same effort time and time again, and it really would benefit from being part of the upstream code base. So I'll be trying to moderate the discussion today but let's start off just by having each of our panelists briefly introduce themselves. Uh, Istvan, do you want to go first? Yeah, yeah I can, yeah. So uh, I'm Istvan Monar and working with uh, our own company in the last, I don't know, 20 plus years now. Uh, but during this couple of years, uh, I was participating in different projects or even being uh, working at international organizations, international banks. So get pretty deep into the financial um, industry. And uh, then the whole company uh, of 20, 30 guys uh, were involved in multiple projects in Europe and also in Southeast Asia, delivering uh, software based on Finerac in the last five years. Uh, for the customer specific requirements, given the regulatory reasons that it needs to be customized or the scalability reasons that um, how to handle that type of load that they were looking for. And one additional area that I'm pretty much involved in the real time payment uh, kind of solutions, uh, both in, for example, in Singapore, faster payment, I was there, then it was introduced in Hungary or in the European Union, the SEPA instant uh, payment. And shortly, I will also talk about that, what we have delivered on the payment. Okay. Thank you, Sean. And then, Avik, do you want to introduce yourself in Finnish? Yeah, I guess I'm um, Avik from Finarfin. Um, we mostly build out payment solutions uh, around the open banking uh, ecosystem in India. Uh, we build out implementations for uh, payment service providers and provide a set of payment APIs as part of our uh, platform as a service offering as well. Along with that, we build uh, some bespoke loan products for uh, different types of uh, joint liability groups, micro enterprise loans, uh, old loans, and such. We also advise uh, payment service providers and non banking financial corporations in India on how to transition away from legacy technology, which impacts their business. Yeah. Thank you, Avik. And then, Victor, I think we've got your video and audio. So I'll let you just briefly introduce yourself and Fintech Yando. Uh, hello, we are uh, Pintequiando. I am Victor Romero. We have been working with financial institutions here in Mexico and Latin America. Uh, the financial uh, institutions are banks, are uh, social uh, cooperatives, and, and well, uh, we have done developments uh, on top of Finerac and Finerac CN, integrating payment hubs, integrating also mobile application like wallets or 
mobile pay payments only. And we, we accomplish with the local regulation depending of, of the country. Th that's it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Victor. Yeah, so the first you know question I wanted to propose to our panelists today was really, you know, from your experiences, what have been the ideal target uh, markets to you know leverage the core strengths of either Finneract or Finneract CN, and what have you seen as like the most ideal and use cases to to scale on either generation of the platform? So anybody feel free to jump in with their experience. Um, I would uh, come with one uh, idea to to this that an interesting use case for Finneract that many global institutions are struggling with their existing uh, core banking platforms. And it's always a case that if you come down to the numbers, that how much does it cost for me for a single account? And if I get a customer, could I afford this with that expensive technology or legacy, let's say what I have. And many of these institutions looking for an alternate solution to bring in a lot of additional customers who doesn't work with their existing systems, but they look for an alternate solution. Uh, those customers typically do not require extremely sophisticated services and extremely sophisticated components. And this is where Finera could fit into an existing landscape. And that's really, a, I believe, a huge area to grow. I agree with a lot of what Istvan said. Um, like for example, maintaining a savings account in one of these core banking implementations in India takes around uh, $13 uh, per month. And uh, when the customer doesn't maintain enough balance, the banks uh, like impose not maintaining monthly average balance fees, which is where the exclusion happens. Even though government through programs have made everyone open an account in these institutions, those accounts are not really usable because of these fees due to minimum balance, which results in like four, 300 to 400 million dormant banking accounts in India. And that is where a lot of opportunity for Finnair exists. And then Ishvan and Avik, was this Finnerac 1.x or Finnerac CN or both platforms, would you say, when you mentioned this as an ideal use case in the target platform? I had the opportunity to talk with different institutions and they do have different appetite. So some of them, like, wants to come out from the mainframe era and then Java and the so-called monolith is a huge jump already. Some who did already that exercise, then they say that now everything must be microservices regardless does it make sense or not but like this needs to be on the presentation for the ceo so it's tricky that it's not really depends that what the platform is capable to do rather than buries the institution with the marketing and they are buying in that everything must be microservice or not so based on that clearly to make a decision that for this institution i rather suggest a cn like solution because that fits to their idea of a core banking platform. Meanwhile, for others who had different concept, different approach, they were happily satisfied with, um, with the Finerac 1.x version, with the addition that it needs to fit to their existing ecosystem, meaning that data warehousing reporting to be extracted and, and like, even front end, for example, they wanted to integrate into their relationship managers front end. So it become an important component, but it's not alone the core banking platform for them, just an important component. In that sense, uh, the one point X extremely fits uh, what, what they wanted. Thanks, Ishvan. And then Victor, I know, you know, for some of the customers you've worked with, they made that calculus and analysis between 1.x and CN. Can you explain a bit of that process and which direction you went and why? Yes, uh, for for the customers that we have integrated uh, 
both uh, systems. Uh, we are using FINERAC as the loan origination system and the calculation of the loan accounts and the maintenance will be in, in this platform. And on the other hand, we're using FINERAC CN and the, the deposit and bulk uh, disbursement in this platform because the scalability that we have uh, developed for, for this another platform because we are uh, expecting, well, our customer to handle more than 20 millions of uh, debit accounts. And, and we need to integrate with ATM and point of sales, and also with the digital channels like internet banking and mobile banking. So that's the reason that Finerac CN will be the backbone for the uh, workload that, that is expected the, the customer. And the integration between these two platforms is on top of two, of two tools. One is the, the VPN, which is CV, and the other is Gravity, which allowed us to expose the, the APIs in the open banking specification. Thank you, Victor. And we are definitely going to come back to some of the benchmarks and scalability targets you were able to achieve and how in a moment. And then, Avik, uh, like from your experiences, where would you say are the you know, ideal use cases for either Finerac 1.x or Finerac CN? Um, that includes all the capabilities we have. Like that includes payments, deposits, loan collections. Um, it, although some of them needed a bit of tweaking and additional components such as the payment hub definitely helped a lot. Right. And uh, we were able to achieve considerable scale with by squeezing out uh, optimizations on FinRAC itself. And uh, most of the teams were happy with the payment schema connectors being separate from the core services even uh, before and then Ishvan and Avik, you know, especially around Finerac.1.x, like what were some of the pain points or bottlenecks you had to overcome to achieve the scalability targets when you were addressing those for your customers? So. Um, what um, we have seen uh, that we we touched upon yesterday that the batch processing part of the system and um, again it depends on the requirements in a traditional setup you have plenty of time during the night to run those batch processes no one else is working or or actually all the other systems are doing their batch uh, jobs uh, so so if time is there that that's not an issue but as you get increasing the number of accounts i mean especially if these are loans which requires some end of day um, heavy duty lifting then then you are starting to squeeze into the given time slot because you need to get the gl files ready for the other system to pick it up to process it so by the morning for the regulators your reports are getting ready so tuning of these batch processes with the one point x was always kind of a, a thing to do uh, because because they have different behavior obviously during the generations there were different logic as they implemented um, some is using individual accounts some is using a big bulk of uh, select statements and, and run those transactions through so that requires some some consideration for sure and um, actually a consequence of this one that the let's say business day concept uh, was required and i would say that we ended up in all of the in implementations that somehow uh, tying the system date and the business kind of date together doesn't really work 
so so that needs that had to be introduced so potentially the system was running on a different day and doing the calculations logically that actually the system date was and um, there are places that this is already available in the code base but it's i would say that it's not consistent across all the different part of the code base so that's the two things that i could bring up Thanks, and we'll come to some more of those similar items when we talk about actionable items for the, the roadmap. Uh, and Avik, you know, like, could you speak to some of like the customers and experiences you've had in achieving the most scale out of either Finnerac 1.x or Finnerac CN and what you needed to do to enable and achieve that? All right. So one big part was introducing the right tooling um initially we started uh, pushing data into Elasticsearch through webhooks then we made uh, an event pipeline with kafka and then gradually the kibana dashboards got started using not only for operational analytics but uh, users started assuming that it's the business intelligence tool and that's where we faced a lot of um, challenges where we had to look into different tools such as um, Presto, which can do um, a bit distributed SQL queries and uh, encourage users to use a BI tool like Apache Superset or Redash and uh, not expect all the analytics uh, visualizations to come from Kibana, especially uh, with post facto changing data become an issue uh, after the event has occurred uh, since you cannot join uh, indexes per se in elastic search and um, that's where we uh, looked at introducing spark to do some of the etl stuff so that um, like we need not uh, like pull from elastic search always so spark also started putting the data in micro batches into uh, an S3 sync. And then uh, Presto could also read from uh, S3. So this is the more or less the tooling part. And yeah, Aurora helped uh, scale, uh, but uh, Percona proved a much uh, lower cost alternative to Aurora clusters. Thanks, Avik. And then Victor, like you had some pretty high scalability targets you needed to meet for the project down there in Mexico. Can you explain, you know, some of what you did? I know you swapped out the database in Finraxian, and what did you do to help achieve that? So. Uh, yes, because of the workload, we have replaced uh, Postgres or MariaDB, which was the, the previous yeah, yeah, database yeah. used in Finer at CN. And we started to use TDB, which is a new SQL database, in order to handle the elastic uh, transaction uh, that could happen during the online, and also to, to, to handle the workload expected because the, the number of accounts this is in, in one side i mean the, only the, the low end accounts but also the, the customers uh, the, the information related to the customer is important to, to keep for the information or the required by another institution that have contracts with the with the bank so then uh, we have replaced this that uh, this database and it, right now is is working as expected. On the other hand, also all our development has been using uh, containers. Docker is our container engine. And we are using uh, uh, Kubernetes for the Docker orchestration. These are our uh, tooling for handling the scalability requested by the by the customer. And also, on the other hand, we have replaced the um, web servers for, um, instead of Nginx, we are replacing uh, 
for open light speed, which allows to handle the HTTP version 3 protocol. So this allows us to, to have more concurrent connection for the web page for the customer facing. Um, and also, well, we have done uh, enhancement in the accounting. Uh, most of the enhancing are for the cash-based accounting. And uh, on the other hand, also we have the enhanced the batch processes because the the need of running the, the calculation for the interest. Uh, cannot be run in a single machine. We are uh, running in different clusters. So we have, in case of the quartz, using GDBC store instead of RAM store. This is for the Finerac CN part. Finerac only. Okay, thank you, Victor. And then I'm gonna you know, pivot to the question that Alex had, as I think it'll be a nice point of segue into talking more about the roadmap and you know collective items that the partner community can collaborate on that can go into upstream so alex brought up the question around you know what are some of those performance benchmarks in terms of tps that had to, to meet so for your you know customers can you explain some of the benchmarks you were expected to meet and like what you ended up achieving because i know from the perspective of the mifos community you know, we've seen interest from like telcos and fintechs and they're like, oh, you know, can you support 1,000, 2,000 TPS? I think one large fintech was even seeking, you know, three to 5,000 TPS. And so at a community level, if we could have, you know, more like recent performance benchmarking test done to what's there as part of the open source, I think that would help the broader community be able to get Finteract more, more widely adopted. So we'd like to learn what targets you had to achieve okay we will share this uh, performance information as soon as as we get the the, the results but uh, this will be a, a good reference for all the community and, and the people interested to use similar use cases And then, Ishvan, Avik, what specific metrics did you need to achieve? And I think one, you know, good item for the roadmap would be at least to just publish, you know, what are these typical metrics and expectations that come up from, you know, these prospective mm -hmm. customers looking at Finrac. And then ideally, you know, we can establish a goal at a community level to try to achieve some, you know, minimum target metric there, but at least being aware of what the target metrics are and what we should be measuring would be ideal mm -hmm. as a starting point. Yep, I have I have two, uh, which which probably makes a lot of sense. One of them, as I mentioned, the, around this batch processing, that uh, what's the number of loan accounts that you could comfortably manage in an end of day process, let's say in an hour. And um, I don't have the numbers at hand, but as far as I remember, so the target was, let's say, like 100,000 accounts to be closed in an hour time window. And that is like not straightforward to achieve uh, with, the, with the... So that's one uh, matrix that could be used. And another matrix, the opposite, the opening of these loan accounts. Um, if you take that use case that on a Black Friday you keep shopping and customers wants to use this type of loans for their shopping, then you could end up with really peak uh, loan account creations. Now there are multiple ideas here that that how you can kind of create um, or, or reduce this peak but ultimately that could be like another measure that that how many accounts could you open in a given time window i don't have the numbers here that what but but it's definitely on the thousands scale uh, per minute let's say 
uh, that that you should expect from the system to be able to handle. And then obviously there's a real-time transaction scenario uh, and we all know that these peaks could come in, especially if someone bombards the system with a, a huge batch uh, and then, then it flood, floods the system with real-time transactions. That could be another factor uh, that we can consider as a performance, something that we measure. Vinavik, I'll let you quickly respond and then I'll go through a couple of the mm -hmm. sort of items we've been proposing on the roadmap and get some responses as we're coming into about five to six minutes left. Right. So I don't think there's an easy answer to which metrics because uh, what we are using in production is uh, like some commercial tools like uh, like Nginx Plus and New Relic. And we would like want almost similar set subset of those metrics and not uh, narrow it down to one or two metric. And uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. thanks, Avik. And then, yeah, Michael, oh, sorry, go yeah. on. So Are what we could do, uh, but, but some of these metrics, what we could list and create as part of our integration test, some kind of measurements. So that on a given platform, that where we are, and we could always say that, okay, our, our baseline is 50 something on six CPU and this database. And then as the code gets modified, at least we make sure that we try to improve on some of these metrics. And yeah, I listed a couple and probably could come up with a list of 10 that what makes a lot of sense. Uh, like another use case could be that if you use your system as a wallet and you have cards associated with your wallets. Then again comes this Christmas shopping, Black Friday shopping and all these nightmares, uh, which could give us another uh, important input that what transactions uh, could we look for. Okay, and then a little while back on the list, you know, Michael helped to propose, you know, what some of these areas of tools that are replicable, replicable that could be focused on and what are some of the shared resources the community could collaborate on. So Ishvan, I know when we were planning for this, we talked about some of like the, the tooling that could be utilized. So just trying to recommend and standardize around some of the tools like Prometheus and Grafana. So I think that was one point we wanted to move forward. And then we also brought up, you know, how it would be better to expose, you know, the proper endpoints for capturing more of these business level metrics. So can you talk a little bit about what we discussed there? Uh, yeah. yeah. So, so, so again, two aspects. So how we collect and what actually we are collecting uh, on these informations and probably the other aspect that if we want to drive the system that what tools we are using to drive it. So there's, there's a whole bunch of tools from Gmeter, and at least that's an Apache project uh, being on the Apache conference, but from Gatling or, or if we go a bit further on the behavior driven development side that we use that successfully to drive these uh, tests uh, that, that you define business scenarios in, an, in a business language, let's say, and then you could drive the system with this information via the APIs, what is exposed. And so coming to the other side, uh, collecting the information, uh, what we have done recently uh, related to the payment of implementation that we used Prometheus and Grafana to expose many of the metrics and including business type of metrics that how many transactions take place or what's the volume of the transactions was going through. And then you could have some real time insight that what's going on the system. And another good set of tools is the uh, Elastic Stack and, and Kibana uh, that, um, sorry. So the um, Elastic Stack and then Kibana, which could also give another type of insight on the traffic. Uh, what's going through and again driving or creating dashboards before that information could make a lot of sense. Thanks Ishvan and then another resource that Michael had proposed was more around you know having some of these data sets and having some of these scripts to actually do the performance testing is that you know a good area where 
partners could come together and collaborate in the commons? And do you have, you know, testing scripts or data sets that could be shared back with the community to achieve the same? So, Red, are you asking me? Yeah, you or Avik, because I know, you know, for having to do these tests, like for your customers, <laughs> yep. is this like a resource that you'd be able to, to share back with the community? Because I think this, we'd, we'd identified this as a good part of like the set of common resources in the middle that it could be there available for others to use and do these tests on their own and whatnot. So. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> and we have a bunch of JMeter tests uh, for for testing loan collections in uh, and uh, accrual and uh, triggering accrual and monitoring the metrics. So those tests we can share. Uh, and I guess we have something for origination as well. Uh, so yeah, those JMeter scripts we can share. Mm -hmm they will become another asset to maintain the on top of the our existing api documentation in html over swagger then the the integration test suite so yeah and one tool what we have used uh, is the cucumber uh, stack for behavior driven development it's not for performance but then but then you could actually execute them parallel. But it it is, I would say, very customer specific because with these tools, you need to implement kind of a language that you agree with the business at how they use this. So that's probably hard. And it's also kind of complicated to, to maintain. But the other one, which makes a lot of sense, and again, we mentioned this probably yesterday, uh, using um, um, what? Mm, wait, look, postman, postman collections. Um, similarly to Gmeter, just a different tool that we capture some of the, uh, like an account open process or a whole complete set of transactions in a sequence. And then you can run them uh, with some kind of tool uh, to measure the performance of the system. And I'm thinking that is there anything which which is which is which could be generic can be part of the integration test uh, platform um we we need to look for look for this okay no thank you and i think we're getting to the end of our session and we need to start channeling people over to the next one but to sort of recap you know we discussed as part of this roadmap trying to define and identify you know, what some of those metrics are and targets we need to achieve. As Michael noted, you know, we really want to focus first off on having more of that testing infrastructure. Then we can think about the actual monitoring tools. And then, you know, lastly, once we know what those bottlenecks are, you know, actually have tickets to do the proper tuning and indexing and whatnot, you know, changes at the code level to achieve the scalability. So, you know, Michael took notes here. We're going to try to translate these into tickets in JIRA and actionable items for people to pick up. And then Mifos is helping to guide like a scalability working group as well to just give you know individuals a place to communicate and have regular meetings to track these items. So we really welcome others in the community to join these efforts going forward as Finneract and Finneract CN continue to get adopted by larger and larger institutions. And we wanna you know make sure it's world-class and individual partners and companies don't need to invest all their effort in achieving scale when we can do it collectively as a community. But wanna thank Michael for taking notes and thank Ishvan, Victor and Avik for being on the panel. And hopefully, you know, if there are more discussion, take it to the birds of feather session at the end of the track today. And then next up, we've got a panel on open G2P, which is also about, you know, achieving scale in the form of digitizing large scale cash transfers at the government level and hope you all can attend that and i'll see you over there momentarily thank you everyone thank you thank you Ed. thank you everyone thank you, everyone cheers <laughs>